I left school at 15 due, due to a dyslexia. I, uh, my numeracy and literacy skills were, were very poor. Until the age of 45, I uh, never held a job for longer than two years because through fear of paperwork, um, a promotion would mean you know, more responsibilities in that area and I think in some ways I sabotaged my jobs or I would quit. In the early part of 92, um, I think I was about 31 then, I was invited to a men's breakfast by a, um, a friend of mine. I only went along to the meeting to um, add a respect for my friend. There's an old gentleman sharing the, uh, sharing the Bible story. He actually, at the end of the meeting, he, he asked the question, would, would anyone here like to give their heart to Jesus, get to know him? And I can remember sitting up the back of the room, my arms folded with an attitude that smelt like you wouldn't believe. I'm saying to myself, no way, Jose, not me. I know what you're up to. All of a sudden, my arm was in the air without even realising it. And I, it was like someone had dragged me out. It literally lifted me out of my seat. And before I knew it, I was walking down the, down the aisle. And it was at that point that uh, that actually gave my heart to God. And, uh, and my life's never been the same since. Prior to becoming a Christian, I think the first in tangible encounter that I had with the Holy Spirit was uh, the day my grandfather died. I can remember ringing my uncle and asking if it would be okay by him if I did Pop's eulogy. And then you, you sort of need to understand that, the, that my um, writing and spelling skills were, were extremely poor and it was very difficult to do something like that. But I sat down and started to write and I just felt this feeling that it's not me writing this. Quite incredible, in, in half an hour I had this thing written out exactly how I wanted it done. And I showed it to Linda and she said, my goodness, that didn't take you long. Sorry. It wasn't until you know, years later that I, after I became a Christian, that I um, found out from Pop's wife that, that he would every night pray for me and my cousins and siblings for our salvation. The most significant thing in my life is my relationship with Jesus Christ. But the interesting thing is that that started with my grandfather praying for me. For that I'm eternally grateful someone thought enough about me to want me to know God. Pop was probably the, the greatest influence in my life as I was growing up. I think it was his integrity and, and his honesty that um, it was known by all. I mean, everybody knew, you know, like it almost went hand in hand. Pop, integrity. My grandchildren are among the biggest joys in my life and I want to spend as much time as I can with them in whatever form that might take. I just hope and pray that, uh, that I can be half the grandfather that my grandfather was to me. He was an amazing man and, and I think his legacy is something that I aspire to continue. That, um, that my grandkids will feel the same way uh, about me. But only, uh, only time will tell that. I think without a doubt, if it weren't for, weren't for God in my life, my marriage to Linda, and possibly on my children, it wouldn't even exist today. Our family are healthy, we're all following Christ. I've, uh, I've been in a job that I've had for nine years which is significantly longer than all the jobs I've had beforehand. But I, tri I attribute it all to, to, to God in my life. Having Jesus as my personal saviour has been quite literally my saviour. 
just don't underestimate the power and the, and the significance of your prayer in the lives of your, of your loved ones. You can have a real impact on their life. I feel really fortunate that I'm, I'm actually living out my grandfather's legacy. What's yours? What's the legacy you leave for your family?